All right, Salt Strong Nation, we are out here wade fishing. There, Luke, Luke, foul hook, what did you get? <laughs> a whiting foul hooked with the new Brazilian shrimp. Waiter Dave is now on. Oh, he just lost one right there. So guys. Anybody can catch him in the mouth. <laughs> Luke's not mic'd up. Waiter Dave is mic'd up. I'm mic'd up. This is going to be a completely different and unique podcast experience. <laughs> we are live out here somewhere on Enclote. That's Florida, for those of you that don't know this uh, area. Beautiful sunrise. Already caught a couple snook, a couple trout, and we're like, this is uh, this is just too good of a spot not to film. I think they would call this a cast cast, wouldn't they? What's that? This would be a cast cast. Yes. Are you getting strikes every every cast? Definitely fish out here. What do you got? Well, I got we got waiter day with there. a. Fishing just a uh, half ounce uh, green and white bucktail with a little bit of mylar flash in there. There's a lot of bait swimming along this point here, and uh, this is really just trying to mimic the bait. But it's heavy enough to get down to the bottom, and right now that's the key. You've got to be you've got to be bouncing your uh, your lure along the bottom. That's where the trout or the snook, whiting, whatever we're into here, are hanging on, um, and just kind of let uh, let it bounce along the bottom with the current and. Hope that something picks it up. So far, so good. Yeah, man, that's a half ounce? It's a half ounce. Okay. Uh, you don't really need any more than that, um, but that's just about the right weight for out here with this current right now. So. Well, it was interesting. Right when I got out here, of course, I'm doing what most anglers do is I launch it way out, and then I watch Luke and Waiter Dave are catching fish really close. Yeah. And uh, as soon as I actually started making shorter cast, all these fish were literally just cruising right up here I mean, maybe 10 to 15 feet off. Yeah, and they're right along the right along the edge of the drop off here. I think I just snagged another fish. Dude, you're the ultimate snagger. At least the, you know they're uh, going after that shrimp like crazy. That's a nice sized trout too. My goodness, Luke is ruthless. All right, Waiter Dave's turn. So I was using that shrimp as uh, as well. The uh, these big trout seem to absolutely love this. So let's talk about the spot first and foremost. We got a lot of moving water. You guys can probably see it here. And if you're listening to the podcast, you can probably hear it. What else do you like about this spot, Waiter Dave? Well, I mean, first and foremost is you got you know, all the moving water, right? So you have uh, actually in this case an outgoing tide. And what it's doing is it's kind of bringing all the water from St. Joseph Sound and going back out to the Gulf. Um, so you tend to have the bait congregating here. You also have some really nice drop-offs on either side of the point. And uh, surprisingly, the, the fish will hit on either side of the, the, the point, um, even with the incoming, incoming or outgoing tide. But they tend to want to hang right on, the, right on the edge and right in the deepest part of that drop-off right before or after the, uh, after the point. You guys get a little view here of what we're looking at. And look at that, I mean, super short cast. We've got birds, we got bait, we got lots of current, we got the structure with all these different little sandbars, and you can, you can just see how this whole area is getting changed constantly by storms. Because uh, I've been here before and it looked differently than, uh, than this here at the, uh, at the point. You can see here behind me just kind of what this looks like. And even though Waiter Dave fit, wade fishes like 200 days a year, a lot of times he's taking his boat to get I love spot. that shrimp. Did you get another strike on the shrimp? Every cast, bro. Every cast? They're tearing that thing up. Yeah, you guys are getting lots of strikes. Definitely oh, get, getting hits on every cast. Oh, yeah. oh, Luke's on. Luke's on again. And they're all just packed in there. What do you got this time? Whoa. There we go. Oh, doubling up. Waiter Dave's on. Oh. I think I think we know what that might be. Yeah. There he goes. Ah. Uh, that was a that was a It was either a 60-inch snook or a shark. <laughs> what do you have, Luke? Uh, probably trout. A little trout. Dang, you break See, out. Look at that rainbow right behind us there, by the way. Oh, look at that. It's a double rainbow. That if is you guys awesome. Are listening, we have a rainbow out here in the 
middle of the morning. I didn't even know there was any rain nearby, but apparently there was. So what have you get ripped off? Yeah. Yeah, right, I'm, so I'm thinking that was so probably let's talk a shark. About what do you got? What are you using for leader? How long? Well, I'm, first leader. I'm fishing a uh, medium action rod, 7.6 uh, spinning rod. You got a 3,000 Shimano reel on here. I'm fishing only 10 pound test, which is all I ever use. Yep. I mean, there's not a lot of obstructions out here. So even if you do catch or hook a big snook, you're not likely to get broken off. You know, the exception here is, you know, I think I probably just hooked a decent sized shark and uh, didn't have much chance. But um, and then I'm fishing 30 pound, uh, in this case, fluorocarbon leader. Uh, again, I'm not sure that it really makes a difference whether it's mono or fluorocarbon, but I've got a lot of fluorocarbon to use up. So yep. uh, at this point, but that's what I'm using. And then, uh, as I said, just you need a jig heavy enough to get the lure down to the bottom. That's the key right now. And so right now it's taking about a half an ounce with the with this uh, with this uh, current to, to get it down there. But uh, but that's you know the key right now. So and uh, as I said, I'm just fishing. Either a uh, red and white or green and white, or in this case, I call this my Christmas jig. Oh, yeah. It's uh, red, white, and green. Uh, and again, a half ounce, but. Um, I'm right noticing now, your, uh, your fanny pack has become more manly since the last time I fished with well, you. Well, part of it is because they've sold out of my normal one. <laughs> and so uh, last time uh, I, had to, I had to go a little bit bigger, but um, what I find myself doing, which I always try not to do, is. With a bigger pack, I start putting more stuff in. It gets a little bit heavier. It gets a little more cumbersome. Yep. So I'm going to have to force myself to, to go back uh, to a smaller pack just to <laughs> become uh, a little uh, easier to handle. Cool. What knot do you tie? What do you like? Well, I use a, a, loop. a loop knot. Yeah. But I use what it's actually called the mirror lure knot. It's, it's extremely simple to tie. Um, you know, I rarely, if ever, have a break off. And... You know, when I'm out wading, you know, first of all, you're in wet water. A lot of times there's wind, so the knots need to be simple and quick. And uh, and this is about as simple and quick a loop knot as I've had. I've been using this loop knot for, you know, 25 years. I, I know there's others out there that supposedly are stronger, but if I tie it right. Hey, just so you know, Luke is trying to snake your spot there. Is he? Yeah, oh, yeah. On camera. Yeah. Walking well. right behind you. <laughs> He's laughing. I can't help but think you were complicit in that. I don't know something you had going on there. Oh, look at, look at him. He's hooked in the second he comes over there. You got your shark? Might or, be a shark or as well. Or your 60-inch snook. Or a snook or a jack? Could be a big jack. He's fighting kind of jacky. That's a big Watching your rod tip there. Well, let's hope it's a big snook. As soon as he got into my spot. Or, or a big tail cat. Oh, no, no, I don't think it's a big sail cat. You deserve it, dude. You, des you deserve a sail cat. Or did you foul hook something again? What has he got? What? Big jack. It is a jack, isn't it? Half a jack. Oh, dang. Do you think there's any sharks out yeah, here? Yeah, that's a big jack, too, dude. There might be some sharks out Holy here. smokes. <laughs> that explains why it stopped fighting. Dang. Yeah. You guys are listening to the podcast. Maybe we should go in a little shallower. What do you yeah. think? If you guys are listening to the yeah, we're out here waiting. Uh, and that <laughs> shark <laughs> destroyed that thing. Look at that. Wow. All right, yeah, let's get the blood uh, away from where I'm right down in Joe's, Joe's ankle. I'm waiting. Those yeah. sharks will come super shallow. That's nuts. Well, All right. and you know, honestly, this could be part of the reason why the, these snook aren't here right now. Yeah, so, so Dave, talk about that. You, you, you wade fish a lot. You've been out in this area pretty much most of the summer. And you said recently, uh, you got something on? No, oh. just some weeds. Recently, the, the bigger snook haven't been around. No, uh, in fact, the, the two weeks prior to the last full moon, which was about a week and a half ago, um, the fishing had been awesome out here. I think that may have been the last big spawn for the snook for the summer. Um, but as soon as that full moon hit, it seems like it's really been tough. The last week has been extremely tough. And I haven't even seen a lot of big snook out here. But at the same time, I have I've hooked a number of pretty good sized sharks, come up with several half uh, half jacks yep. um, as well. And um, it could be that those, those uh, snook are have uh, left here because of all the sharks, possibly. But right when we got here, there's some pretty big trout. Yeah, I no, mean, no, the, know, trout, for, the uh, trout are here, too. There's no doubt. For Gulf of Mexico trout. Now, the, the trout will hang around here almost all day long, as long as there's not 
too many boats anchored up right here as long as that tide's moving. Yep. And you get the get the lure to the bottom. And so tell us what you're doing here. You're you're letting it hit the bottom and then a quick little pop. Yeah, just just letting pop it in, and then when it comes up, that that current's taking it. But you really want to feel the bottom. You want to feel it bouncing along that bottom. Well, good news if you got uh, your light action stuff and a half ounce jig head, you can usually feel that bottom pretty well. I know, absolutely. Luke's over there trying to get some more sharks. Yeah, this area just Although it's looks interesting, I'm glad you guys so brought those shrimp today because ever since I saw that video, I've been wanting to try it out here. I just haven't been able to get any. Yeah, our boy Marcos, uh, who we had on the podcast, that was a, an incredibly popular podcast. Uh, one, because I think shrimp are, are just that universal bait that everyone likes to use. And two, that dude has more social proof than anyone I've ever seen. Yeah. That's all he does is target those monster shook. And apparently that's all they do in Brazil. Yeah. They, you know, they call them the Rabalo down there. And that's like, that's the thing to do. Well, if, they, I, if I was down there, that's what I'd be doing. They have dialed it in with that, uh, that shrimp. I think Luke's on uh, something. Nope, missed it. But uh, he finally got some more in. Just like all the tackle manufacturers, uh, everyone's having a tough time keeping up with uh, the demand and the supply. Inventory's been crazy low. But he sent us about, uh, about 15 of them. Good news is that they're impossible to rip, so they last forever. But uh, you do lose them occasionally to sharks. Or structure. So I'm one of the tough parts about fishing out here right now, this time of year especially, is the bite tends to be best right at sunrise. Yeah, and, and it, that's it right when to, it all was happening. It tends to slow down, you know, even by 7.30, 8 o'clock, the, the bite tends to slow. Um, although, if you're going to have a chance of catching fish throughout the day, this time of year, it's going to be where you've got a lot of current, yep. you've got some deeper water and drop-offs, so like these points. The other problem with the points, unfortunately, is too, you get a lot of people coming out here anchoring up off the points, making it tough to wait it. But, uh, That's why you got to come early morning and on a weekday, right? Yep, which is what we're doing. In so. the summertime. But you, you wait fish pretty much all year long. I, oh, absolutely all year round. That, that's all I do. So, what's yeah, your, what's I'm your waiting favorite? Probably uh, uh, at least 300 days a year. What's your favorite season? You know what? Whatever season it happens to be, I guess, it always ends up being my favorite <laughs> season. But uh, I really enjoy the kind of from late fall through the winter and, and, and spring. And are you always going to the beaches? I know you do a lot of causeway stuff, too. I do. I, I mean, summertime for me is, is primarily I'm focusing on, uh, on the beaches, you know, points, inlets for the big snook. Anywhere where there's deeper water and a lot of water movement, that's normally where you're going to find the in structure, is where you're going to find those bigger snook. But I have a lot of really nice flats that are near some of these areas, around the Skyway in particular, um, where I'm picking up snook, you know, not the big snook, but smaller to mid-sized snook along the mangroves and um, in the potholes. And those are steady producers all year round. What I love about weight fishing is I, I just did it this past weekend with the family is you can take the family to a little island like this. Yeah. Wife is happy. She's got her book and a margarita and a, and a chair and an umbrella. And the kids are happy. They're out digging for sand fleas, shrimp, and trying to catch little bait. And Papa's happy because he can sit here and wait fish. Yeah, well, that's actually one of the reasons why I, I got into the weight fishing. I started it when my kids were little. It didn't hurt. I didn't have a boat either, but uh, <laughs> but we found some great spots that have, you know, easy access. A lot of times they'll have concessions and bathrooms that are nearby and um, and some great fishing oh, along with it. Yeah, one. There we go. We're gonna that nice. Waiter Dave is on. Well, another Got it right close to the... Uh, well, there's a little whiting and trout are coming in here. Hey, you guys are tearing up the whiting. And uh, that was super close. I mean, that hit a... Uh... Yeah, he just followed it right up into the sand. Whoa. Oh, there we go. Hungry little whiting. Yeah, so right now we've got... The other thing that happens out here, especially this time of year, is we got a lot of dead grass that's 
I don't know if you guys water. can see that, but and this uh, current tends to tends to uh, focus it right off the point. So sometimes you may have to move around a little bit to stay out of the out of the the grass. Yep. But yeah. It usually this, passes, and so you just kind of pick your spots. Those patches are great to see when you're offshore, but uh, not so much when you're uh, here yeah. fishing from a sand. Well, oh, you got another one. Yep. The other reason I like this point in particular is you also have access to some great, just some, some shallow beach that's got a nice swash that runs all along it. So if, you, if it gets too crowded here with boats, then I move up and, and fish the shallower along the beach, along the swashes. And in this case, on the inside, there's also some beautiful grass flats that, uh, that can produce. So there's, there's really a lot of different options, all within walking distance, quite honestly. So you can anchor the boat in one spot and really fish three completely different zones. I want you guys to notice too, that Waiter Dave is barely wet, meaning he's just above the ankles. I was uh, I was down in, in Boca Grande, and we took the boat down to Little Gasparilla Island, and we went and fished the point, and everyone was up at least to their waist, if not higher, which one, that current is ripping there, so it's not even that safe, and I could see a couple snook coming in behind them. They were literally behind them, they had no idea. And I, I think that's just one of the best tips when you're fishing beaches like this that have a lot of moving water, those snook and trout will go up super, super shallow. You do not need to be up to your nipples. No. In fact, even, I mean, I rarely wade more than waist deep. And if you do, it tends to get uncomfortable. It also gets, it gets tired. If you have to keep that rod up high, oh, yeah. your shoulders start to, to really feel it pretty quickly. So yep. uh, another reason to not have to get deep. But as I said, more often than not, I see people out fishing and I'm going to guess that most of the fish are between them and the shoreline yeah. than, uh, than there are in front of them. Yeah, that's, I think, one of the most common mistakes. You get any more strikes? No, oh, the bumps kind of slowed down here a little bit. Oh, here comes another boat, huh? Film Lukey out here. We're getting, I mean, so all those Lukey's still getting bumps? Yeah. So, oh, the salt strong guys are out here with Waiter Dave. We're gonna go take their spot. That's why Waiter Dave always carries. <laughs> he, he sends a warning shot to anyone who comes to his area. So don't try to follow Waiter Dave to his weight fishing spots. Very aggressive guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a pacifist. <laughs> so we still got some birds. All around us, there's definitely still some bait out here. Yeah, no, no. I think the biggest issue right now is we've got all this grass that's just moved in. Yeah, this so, is uh, crazy how much grass is pushing through here. So we may have to wait till it passes us. So you started off with uh, with the bucktail. Is that your kind of your go-to? On it is. It is right here. I, I fish it a lot, uh, and again, primarily because it's it sinks quickly, gets to the bottom, and they're. They're, they're durable, and they catch anything and everything. Yep. Although I will tell you, I'm impressed with the uh, the shrimp that Luke's fishing, because I think that's ideal for here, especially if you can put it on a little larger jig head like that half ounce. Yeah, and pop that thing <clears throat> off. I think it's that big tail that uh, when it pops, it almost like slaps the sand yep. uh, that that tail does, because it's still pretty, uh, pretty stiff. Well, I think he's going to get a chance to use that at a couple other places we go. Yeah, Definitely I'm, I'm getting pumped. bumps. They're just, I yeah, don't know if these are the little whiting that are just chasing this thing around. I'm going to see if I can't uh, pick up something over this side over here a little bit deeper. I had Mark Sosen on the podcast. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about, you know, lures. And uh, he had shared with me something I thought was pretty cool that apparently in World War II, they gave every soldier kind of like an emergency SOS kit. Right. And inside that kit was guess what? A bucktail a jig. A white bucktail jig. Yeah. That every soldier had is a basically a survival like SOS. If you're out in the middle of nowhere, you had some fishing line and a white bucktail jig. Well, to me that proves two points. Number one, bucktail period are, are effective, right? Yep. There we go. Oh, Luke's on. What do we got here, Lukey? That was a nice trout. So Luke's not mic'd up. Oh, it just came off. That was a nice one. Solid trout. So let's show show this lure real quick. 
So this is what we've been talking about here. The one that we're testing from Brazil. Big jig head, half ounce jig head, big shrimp lure, bouncing on the bottom. And so that tail is what I was mentioning earlier. This thing is just when you pop it off the bottom, I believe that's just going up and stirring up even more sand. And it's as soon as you get that, that pop off the bottom is normally when you feel that little hit right on the drop. Let's see if Luke can do it again. That's a big trout in here, man. Dang. This other boat coming up here next to us saying, oh, I see what's happening here. They were kind of, you see them? They were kind of moseying around to see if we had any tight lines. The second you got that trout on, whoop, whoop. Oh, I think he's dropping his wife off. He's like, oh, honey, you get to go hang out today. I'm going to go fishing. That's pretty funny. All right, Luke can do it. He gets one more chance. Waiter Dave's out there hitting the other point. Going way out there. A lot of uh, a lot of grass. Yeah. You think they're moving a little bit further off now? Now that the sun's coming up? Yeah, I think we've just hammered these right here. Oh, is Waiter Dave on? Oh, he's just got a bunch of grass on. Yes, yeah, it's a cool little uh, cool little area here. Definitely a lot of fish. As long as you don't get any more of them sharks. We'll have the gear for that. Waiter Dave's going way out there, which I'm not gonna risk. If you guys have been following us, you already know that we lost one nice camera on a podcast to the ocean, which was brutal. And our boy Cody, which is why I'm having to do it, Cody had some surgery. So uh, we'd already had this in the books. We're not gonna let Waiter Dave down. So we uh, said, you know what, I'll film. I'll be the podcast guy. I still get to do my own podcast. So if you guys are listening, I haven't been in the picture once. I'm actually holding the camera and mic'd up. Oh, wait a day. Oh, he just tried to set the hook on something and trying to film all this. I'm still going to send the footage to Cody to, to edit it. Um, so Cody, if you're watching this, we miss you, buddy. This is hard work. Get why your carpal tunnel while your hands so uh, so tired. See if Luke can get any more, and we'll close it down. Now, if you want to know more about Waiter Dave, he's got his own site. He's done a couple courses with uh, with us. Uh, we did the uh, Wade Fishing Mastery, which was a, a top seller, and uh, and we've done a few other tips. And of course, Dave is one of our insiders, so uh, he's in there constantly, you know, posting little tips and fishing reports on where he is. Oh, Luke's on. Luke's on. Ah. Dude, we have to end this podcast on a good note. Uh, Luke is still there fishing the shrimp. Waiter Dave is still way out there. And I'm itching to do a little fishing myself. I made a couple casts. I'm one for three, dude. That's like pretty good in baseball. Really good in fishing. I had a really, really nice trout uh, trout that I landed on the, on the same shrimp Luke has, just slightly different jig head. And you guys, Stay tuned, we might start supplying some of these shrimp to our members uh, because doggone it, they work. You know, that first time we went out with Marcos and uh, his wife Luana, we were down in Everglades and we were fishing pretty deep, you know, 12 to even 20 feet uh, and, and catching those monster, I mean, 35 to 40 plus inch snook. And uh, so we could tell that this shrimp worked. However, there was still a little doubt, like, you know, is this going to work for the, for the everyday Joe and Luke, the everyday guy and gal who's, uh, who's out there just trying to get a tight line and catch a bunch of fish. And the more we keep fishing with it, fishing docks, now wade fishing with it, it continues to keep working. Oh, Waiter Dave's coming back. Yell at me if you get one more on, Luke. We can close up this, uh, this podcast. But to me, this is, I believe, one of the best ways to fish. It's, it's almost like hunting. It's, um, I mean, just, it's almost kind of like bow hunting, really, right? Uh, and, you know, versus like, you know, live bait, just sitting there chumming up the, uh, the waters. Uh, this is just such a fun way to do it. Oh, Luke's on, Luke's on. See if he can land this one. I mean, another trout, it's kind of fighting like a trout, yep. Let's see, any size of this one? Yeah, they're getting smaller, but they're still hooked. Oh yeah, a little bit smaller. All right, dude. Let's see. All fish? Hook 
Cole. Nailed, nailed the shrimp. Quick Let me get a quick, uh, quick pick. A do a, fi a fishing report on it. There you go. Sweet. All right, guys. We'll, uh, well, we'll post that one in the uh, Insider Club. Waiter Dave retied. Oh, he's got one of those dart spins on. Waiter Dave, dart spin? Is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, a little glow dart spin. Oh, that's what you put on when everything else is failing. The secret weapon. Let's see. You get, it's you get three cast. See if you can get anything on the dart spin. So this is Patrick Sabeel's. Uh, yeah, Band of Anglers. Yeah. Uh, I had Patrick on. Um, what a smart dude, my goodness. Yeah. I went over to his house. He actually lives really close to me. So you can see the action on this thing. Yeah, that, that little, uh, little yeah, spinner blade on the back really yeah, flip. creates a lot of... So you guys can see what this thing is. Yeah, so I've actually got this on a uh, quarter ounce uh, lead head and then just this little spinner on a nice swivel and it just creates some additional action for yeah. it. But I actually started, I saw this actually up in uh, Cape Cod beginning of last summer. Oh, and we, uh, everyone said for, this is A lot wicked. of guys were using it for stripers. Wicked awesome, eh? Yeah, a lot of guys were using it for stripers and I started thinking, man, that, I think it would be a really nice snook lure. And as soon as I got back here uh, after my trip last summer, I started putting on it and really turned out it, it really is a, a good snook lure as well as trout or anything else. Yeah, that, oh, oh, oh man, I don't know if you guys can see that. Just follow right there. Something came up and almost hit it right there at its yep. feet. So right now we got to either get in front of or past the uh, grass. <laughs> yeah, there's a nasty, never-ending line of grass that just keeps going and going and going. Yeah, it's probably, it's kind of disrupting our uh, ability to fish this effectively right now. Well, I think what you guys are missing is the third man. Me fishing. It could be. I'm. Uh, I'm gonna close up this podcast. Do a little fishing myself. We'll do a few more tips. We'll do some uh, wade fishing tips, and we're gonna hit a couple more spots. Some. Yeah. Some keeps falling you up there too. Yeah. No doubt. All right, guys. Well, that is it. I am gonna flip the camera and make a make an appearance. That is it. You can have my headphones on so I can hear everything. Make sure there's no static, and uh, we appreciate you big time. If you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, please do. We are right there at a million total downloads. Now, if you can believe that, a million downloads of the podcast. We appreciate you guys so much. It has been uh, really just a, a blessing to have amazing people like you, both as an audience and two as, as, as insiders. So for all you know, almost 15,000 insider members, thank you so much for all the love, all the support. You were like family to us. And if you're not an Insider member, what the heck are you waiting on? Join the only club where you save 20% off all of your tackle. You have new how-to tips and new what's working now, actually fishing reports in your area from Texas all the way up to really Virginia every single day going up. And then finally meeting friends. That's how you know we formed a relationship with Waiter Dave was to the Insider Club. So we're now going out there with a lot of our members, you know, especially our, our lifetime members and our, uh, our VIPs and Inner Circle members and going out there trying to do experiences like this every single week, showing you what's working without any bias. We have zero sponsors, as you guys know here at Salt Strong, and then finally helping you save money on the tackle by telling you what's really working and then finally giving the 20% off everything. It's what I'm using myself to buy all my new gear. We out. Peace. Appreciate, appreciate ya. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong in wet lines today